Are you looking for the best MIG welders under $1000 in this video? We will look at some of the 5 best WMIG welders on the market. If you want more information and updated pricing on the products mentioned be sure to check the links in the description down below. Okay. Starting at number 1 Hobart 500,559 Handler 140. MIG Welder 115 v The Hobart 500,559 Handler is my first love by giving me easy access to the world of welding Hobart's 140. Marvel molded me into the welder I am today. The first thing you should know about Hobart is it supports both gas-powered welding GMA and cord-powered welding FKA. I started out with cord-powered welding because it made less sense to thin my wallet out even more for a gas cylinder. Although in the FKA setting the wire was in a hurry to dry out. The results were up to the mark as I expected. Although I was scared to invest close to a thousand bucks for my first purchase. I was more than satisfied with the performance. When I got the machine I opened it to check if everything's in order to my surprise. I found a chart right under its hood, the list has all metrics down to the last detail the sheet is also available in the manual, but it's rather inconvenient to walk around holding a paper all the time. Whenever I forgot what settings to choose for what surface just open the hood, and voila tweaking the setting became less terrifying, as the sheet was a silent mentor. Besides the beads I got from the machine were crisp and clean. I would also come out and say that getting all the juice out of this product is difficult for instance. I had trouble working with 24 gauge metal. The arc was too powerful and was slicing through the surface like paper however, a 0.5 inch gap between the material did the trick for me. So I was able to get the full performance I also tried out one quarter steel to see how it holds up turns out the results were okay-ish. The beads were a little feeble for my liking. The best thickness range for Hobart, 500,559, is 18. I saw the machine in all its glory while working with 18 steel, and I have no qualms about it, because most household projects don't need steels thicker than 18. The machine came to me as a ready-to-devour instant noodles. I've seen a lot of people get taken aback by this, as they can't get the machine kicking, despite its ready-to-use feature. Let me clarify the welder came with a cord-powered FCA setting. So you need to either use it like an FCA welder, or change the wire, and call in the gas cylinder for a GMA setting, after a few years of use. I was satisfied with this welder however. I do think the manufacturer could have done a couple of things better, for instance, the ground clamp boasts of handling material 1 to 1.5 inches thick in reality, while it does clamp 1 inch materials, there's no shot in hell for it to peg down a 1.5 incher, also the 20 duty cycle is a bummer, gives me 12 minutes of non-stop action out of 60. Still as a scared newbie the Hobart 500,559 handler helped me break my cocoon. At number 2 Lotus MIG 175, 175 amp MIG welder, while Hobart's performance was consistent, the price point is at the tip of $1,000, so I wanted to see if I can cut some corners with money and still come out and scathe, after a few clicks here, and a few videos there I came across the Lotus MIG 175, and I'd be blunt in declaring that a deal so sweet is hard to come by, when I say deal I mean the whole package that comes along with the machine, the product comes with a lot of nifty accessories, albeit not all of them are important what caught my attention, is the inclusion of a spool gun, I've seen spool guns sold separately at wallet, slashing prices here is a manufacturer giving it out for free, a curious development I couldn't help but get intrigued, now that I've used the Lotus MIG 175, for quite some time I understand, that their spool gun can't stand in the ring, against the big boy spool guns, however, getting the accessory for free, gives Lotus a spool gun, a tinge of superiority, despite the occasional performance issues, plus I had a seamless time working with aluminum for free, and that's a win in my book, apart from the spool gun, the rest of the accessories are standard, that's all I have to say now coming to the power of this machine. The MIG-175 does have more amperage than Hobart 35 more to be precise initially, I assume the natural outcome of having more current flow would be greater power, and that's true in some cases I found the performance metrics to be nearly identical with two exceptions, while my Hobart machine could work much better with thin material. 24 gauge the Lotus would give out at 18 gauge however, I was able to force the machine to weld a 3.8 metal sheet which is way beyond its pay grade. The only reason I pushed was that I thought theoretically more amperage backing up the machine has to mean better performance with thicker metals. I also found a chart under the welder's hood. The chart outlines all the settings I need to tweak. Before I go to town with the welder, it's another added benefit. 
because I don't want to engage in a staring contest with the manual, which also has the chart, while I'm working the biggest problem with Lotus's MiG-175, is that, their consumables are almost exclusive for instance you couldn't use the spool pump in another welder, even if you wanted to, so that does not bode well for a professional, who's prone to tinkering a lot however, once I start weighing the features and expenses I can easily declare this welder, as one of the top MIG welders within budget in my eyes, at number 3 Weld Pro 200 Amp Inverter Multiprocess Welder, going from brand to brand was getting a little tedious, so I decided it's time to go off brand and see what lurks behind that curtain looking into a few welders I stumbled upon 2020 Weld Pro 200 Amp, and it was a stumble of the ages I must say, I've always been crazy about multi-purpose devices, and for a good reason as well, it amazes me to see neat little machines, manhandling two or even three tasks at once the Well Pro 200 Amp is a similar 3-in-1 welder that has tag and stick welding. I found it at 700, and having three functions in one machine for such a cost seemed too good to be true. I was skeptical however, after taking this welder for a spin, I realized I've never been so wrong I started with stick welding, and the performance was satisfactory. The beads were more than what I'd expected, afterwards. I began experimenting with MIG welding, and I'd say that's the strongest suite. This welder finally came TIG welding, and not a shocker to me, but TIG welding was its weakest link, TIG welding is an intricate process, and this machine just doesn't live up to that while tinkering with different welders. I saw a lot of safety features, but the VRD feature blew me out of water, the feature in all its entirety was so simple yet so elegant, if I leave the welder turned on for a long time, the arc starts collecting voltage, anybody suddenly pulling the arc's trigger, can cause a voltage explosion of sorts, the VRD by itself halts the attacker, before it gathers too much momentum furthermore, I found the dual voltage options to be another boon, even in a home 110V setting, I was able to get the machine up and running, but the low voltage does force the machine to hold back considerably, so 220V will be the choice for heavy duty welding. I know what you're thinking, and I admit I am a fanboy of the Well Pro 200, and for a good reason. I wasn't a fan when I bought the product I was just curious my mind was racing to understand how a meager 30-pound welder can boast of having three weld options. I was surprised shocked as I explored to see the beauty of this welder anyways. I should remain forthright, and inform duly that the TIG welding is nothing more than a toy yes it's that bad, but still I keep fanboying over the fact that it gave me three different welding options at such an unbelievable price point as a beginner, I could experiment away. At number 4 Lincoln Electric K2185 One Handy MIG Welder, it took me a little while to break myself off from the well pro dazzle, so when I did break free, I continued my adventure through the rabbit hole I halted at the tiny Lincoln K2185 One, throwing caution to the winds, as I wondered whether this device with such a compact construction could never stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any good welder out there. So I got the K2185 one, and my previous notions of disregard started falling apart, firstly this is really cheap for what it does, I would have added super, but I'll save it, for later, you'll be hard put to find anything that lasts within a budget of 400, while the welder says it's compatible with 24 gauge I found it a little lacking, but with 23 or 22 gauge materials the performance was up to mark 1 can work with 24 gauge as I did, but their welding game has to be spot on. If you haven't guessed already let me tell you this welder weighs around 26 pounds only, which is why it got my attention I could carry it around, pretending to have an oversized handbag, it came in real handy, when I had to travel to my friend's cottage, to get some welding done, while a lot of users have mixed options about this welder, I didn't find anything to be a major deal breaker, I think most complaints revolve around the machine's inability to handle anything thicker than 1 8 inch, however, I think such expectations from a machine of this price range is like asking a baby to knock out a full-blown adult I admit, compared to other welders, it is a baby and judging by its performance and amperage, that was the whole point of this product, so if heavy lifting is on the menu best leave Lincoln's K2185 one out of the party, also the machine came with both MIG wire and flux core wire one set, so it was prepared for battle right out of the box, the GMA MIG wire setting has better performance than the FKA flux core for some reason the flux core wires seem too willing to run to their demise, my recommendation would be to get a gas cylinder, for MIG-1 could take chances with flux core wires, I don't think it's worth the consumables, despite me defending this welder for less than optimal performance, 
Its duty cycle bums me out. The interruption that follows a 20 duty cycle is a mood killer. I know that 30% would mean 3 minutes a minute extra, but the extra 60 seconds gives me butterflies, still I don't hold it against the K2185 one. I think the little dude dishes out enough home for beginners to take advantage of I wouldn't call it the top. MIG welder under 1000, but the price to performance ratio does make it a worthy challenger. Thanks you for watching guys. I hope you liked this video. If this video was helpful to you please make sure like comment and subscribe. If you have any question related to this product, you can leave a comment down below I will get back to you as soon as possible.